Hello boys and girls, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. Today we are going to learn what application can be given to one of the components of this magnetron. This magnetron is damaged. It does not work since I removed it from a microwave. The rest of the components do work, as is the case with this connector. This connector is the one we are going to learn how to use in a practical application. That is why you will have to remove the cover first. You will have to remove it very carefully with a screwdriver or a lever and take it out slowly. So be very careful. Now what we have to do is remove this connector. To do this we are going to look for a drill bit that fits in the four holes. It should not be very large and we are going to drill them with the help of a drill and thus remove the rivets that it has in the four holes. And in this way, we will be able to remove it. So let's move on to making the holes with the drill. Okay guys, once you have finished drilling the four holes, use a screwdriver. Use a lever and the connector will come out. Don't forget to cut the coil. You must cut it with pliers. You must cut both coils. Once cut, we must be able to remove this piece easily in this way. I'll explain how this component works right away. Okay, guys. As for the connector, you'll have seen that the metal plate makes contact with the metal plate of the magnetron. This is so that this component protects itself and protects the entire equipment against large electrical discharges. And it does this through a capacitor that each terminal has. This pin has a capacitor between it and the metal plate. And this other one also has a capacitor between it and the metal plate. It's a non-polarized capacitor, similar to this one here. To confirm that it has a capacitor between the pins and the metal plate, we're going to use the multimeter. And we're going to set it to millifarads. You shouldn't touch any of the pins. You can touch the metal plate. One of the tips to the metal plate and the other to any of the pins. Okay, we have 0 0.45 nanofarads. We do the same with the other one. And we have 0 0.45. So we confirm that there is a capacitor on each terminal. And we are going to use that quality to be able to connect an LED diode. So let's see how it is connected. To connect the LED, we are going to place the positive to the metal plate and the negative to one of the terminals. You can use any of the terminals. And we can also place the negative to the metal plate. But in this case, we are going to place the positive to the metal plate and the negative to the terminal directly. We move on to do the soldering. Now as you can see the positive is connected. Positive to the metal plate. The negative is connected to the connector. Now to protect the LED we are going to place a normal diode in reverse to the LED. 
the cathode to the positive, and the anode to the negative. Be very careful with that connection. Cathode to positive, anode to the negative of the LED. Well, we have it connected, as you can see there. Cathode to positive, anode to negative. Very well. Now as a recommendation, so that you are not touching here because you could get an electric shock. Since we are going to plug this into 120 volts, and it can also be connected to 220 volts. So to avoid any problems, I advise you to put a heat shrink tube on it. The ideal size to fit in there. Or an insulating tape so that this is insulated. For now, I am going to put an insulator. Okay, guys, this is how our device would be. It is completely insulated. And we have the tips or connectors connected to the test tips. Now before we go on to do the tests, remember that this connector has to be good no matter what. Remember how we did the tests a moment ago, the one with the capacitors that you have between the terminal and the metal plate. If they are shorted, do not make it work. The only thing you are going to achieve is to burn and explode your LED and your diode. Do not forget that this piece has to be good in order to test it. So we are going to use this power outlet. And we are going to place it directly and check if we have phase and neutral. There you can see, the LED is turning on and off. So it allows us to know if there is phase and neutral. And in the same way we can use it on electronic boards to know if we have pass and neutral or if the integrated circuit is working, or if it is not working. Let's test it. First, we are going to measure phase and neutral. We have phase and neutral. After that, we are going to check the integrated circuit. The integrated circuit does not work. It is damaged and I have to change it. So with this, you can test what the high voltage oscillations would be. Well, guys, that has been all. Comment in the comments section if you have ever seen this component used in this way. And don't forget that a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye bye.